Welcome back. In the first installment of this series, we built the main tower of the grain elevator. In this installment, I will walk you through building the various annexes which are required to complete the structure. I have to rework on it. Anyway, while I've been doing that, I've also been working on some of the annexes. I've built the head house. It's a scale 25 by 19 footprint and I think 38 feet high. I've also been working on the front addition. I have the three walls, the base. Because I can't use a solvent on these tubes, what I'm going to do is use rubber adhesive to attach that plate there and then when I come to attach the annex it'll just fit around that and I can use a solvent to attach it. I've still got to mess around getting the base right because at the moment it's nearly right. The side walls I used a JTT concrete block sheet. I put a, a backing of 40 thou and then where the parapet walls are going to be visible from both sides I use more concrete block on the back so it has an overall scale thickness of about 8 inches. I'm going to get that assembled and I'll be right back. Well I've got the office annex assembled. I braced up nice and firmly inside. It just slips in there. The roof, I drew around a couple of tubes to get the, the shape here. It's laminated from two pieces of 30 thou styrene. The top one fits snugly between the parapet walls and the other one between the supports and locks it in place. I've still got to do a lot of detail work. I need the rafter tails and the fascia. I think I'm going to do it with uh, uh, rolled tar paper roofing, which will contrast with the corrugated iron I plan to use on the, on the other two annexes. I need some roof vents and other details. I need the coping on the parapets. But right now, what I want to do is work on the warehouse annex that goes over here and then the dump shed on the other side. Get all three annexes to the same state as this one before I continue. So I'm going to work on that and I'll be right back. <coughs> Over the past couple of days I've got the two I've got the other two annexes done. There's the, the warehouse and the rail dump shed. I managed to get all three of these base annexes out of a single sheet of JTT concrete box sheet. I didn't think I would. I had to do some piecing together on these panels here, otherwise it would have been cutting into a second sheet. Anyway, the corrugated roofing, I'm using a product from Helgen. They do some nice stuff. It's even got steps in it where the sheets have been overlapped. It's a little bit on the thick side, so what I'm going to have to do is get a file or a razor blade or something and scrape a, a notch in the back to thin the edge. Before I go any further though, I want to change this wall here. I've decided I want two loading doors instead of one. Of course it's going to be a lot more difficult modifying this wall now that it's already attached to the base. Earlier I mentioned that this Helgen corrugated siding has great surface detail but is rather on the thick side. Anyway that's a double-edged sword. It's nice being thick because it doesn't need a lot of support but also the edges if that was allowed to overhang it would look horrendous. So what I've done is I thin the edges down by repeatedly scraping with the corner of a razor blade. So now the visible edge is a lot thinner and I'm just getting strips of scale 2x8 and I'm building subfascia and fly rafters which will hide where it goes thicker. Here's the one I did for the other roof. I haven't yet cut the ends off. Well I've got all these subfascia and fly rafters on all three roofs. Also on the double story roof I've put the rafter tails in because it's possible they might be able to be seen. The other two would be impossible so I haven't bothered. So these 
these two roofs can now be installed. This one I still need to detail a lot more. I've also put the coping stones on the parapet walls. The front half of the building is gonna be the reception area and front office. This corner here is gonna be the manager's office. I figure there's a file room in there and probably a bathroom in there. I need a chimney for a fireplace. I've got this very nice cast one from Titchy, which I was thinking of putting in. Needs to go there, in the corner of the manager's office. I'm not sure it's really tall enough though. So what I'm gonna do, instead of using this one, I'm going to build one out of some DPM pilasters. So let me go ahead and fabricate that and I'll be right back. Well, I made my chimney. I cut it in half and there's enough here for another one, for another structure. So I shall just toss this in my box of structural detail parts. Uh, I found a few vents from a Walters roof details kit. I put the masking tape uh, on to simulate tar paper. I haven't glued it in place yet. And I think that uh, annex is just about done. When I laid the track in this area, I overlooked something. If we look down here, the headstocks for this turnout is designed to have the switch stand on this side where it's going to get in the way of the foundation for the dump shed. So what I'm going to have to do is cut this out and then rebuild this area to put the switch down the other side. Then once I've done that, then I've got room to put the foundation for that wall. So I'm going to get on with that next and I will be right back. Well, I've modified the track so that I can have room for a decent foundation for the dump shed. And here it is. If we look along here, the sub wall sticks out beyond the bottom of the block work and that just fits in that slot there. And it will bed down quite nicely. So what I've got to do now is just get the foundation attached to the bench work in exactly the right location. I used uh, some 80 by 80 strip, some 80 thou sheet and a 20 thou backing. I need to clean it up a little bit with the file. foundation for that wall. Well that's about where the structure is going to go. I'd like to get this foundation permanently installed soon, but before I do that I want to make sure that I get something in the back to positively locate it. Before I can do that I've got to fill in this whole area bring it up to the right level. So I'm just going to clear all this junk out and find a piece of home assert to go in there. Well I've cut a piece of home assert to fit because this section here has to be able to come out if I need to move the layout for any reason. I don't want this to be stuck to the track bed over here. So I put sticky tape along both sides so once I glue that in place, it doesn't matter how much glue gets between the two layers, they're not going to be permanently glued together. Get the uh, white glue. This is the end of the second gallon of glue used on this layout. Or is it the third? I can't remember, I've lost count. That's about enough. Make sure there's plenty.
plenty around the edges as well because that's what's going to peel up if anything to make sure that it's firmly in contact while the glue sets I'm just going to put some drywall screws in these are inch and a quarters they will be going all the way through I did check that there was nothing there that's going to get damaged. Now I will just leave that to set up. With all the screws sunk below the top surface, I can still continue to work on it even before the glue set. As long as I don't hide any screws that I want to pull out later. Well, I've put the elevator back in place. Uh, I discovered that the homostat that I just put in is significantly thinner than the pieces under the track there. So I'm going to have to build it up. At the moment I've got cardboard in there just to uh, build up the right thickness. But ultimately I'm going to use strips of 16th inch plywood or basswood. I've got to make sure I don't cover any of the screws that I need to be able to take out. So what I've got to do is slide the cardboard out without moving the elevator, draw around it and find out where the strips need to go. Well I've been working on getting the foundation to work. I've added sixteenth of an inch balsa strips under strategic locations to lift the elevator up to the same height as the homoso under the track bed. I've got this piece gluing up at the moment. This whole procedure seems to be a, a waiting game. I get one or two pieces glued in and then I've got to wait for it to set up because what I don't want to do is risk disturbing this before the glue is hard and then have it set in the wrong place. The rest of the dump shed floor has to be installed in about six bits. For the pit, what I'm going to use is this corrugated material. At the moment it's just primed so I can glue it in and then get regular paint to stick. But the plan is to paint it black and then give it a very light dry brush of silver just hitting the ridges and I figure from the restricted viewing angles inside the dump shed it should look like a grid. Well all the pieces for the floor of the dump shed have now been glued in place. The shed itself remains detachable. Okay, so I think now I can glue that permanently to the rest of the building. Well, as of now, all the hard work is done regarding locating the building accurately. The foundation for the dump shed will hold one end secure. And as this side will be cut into the bank, I'm just going to glue strip wood down here against it on two sides. And that will hold this end in. Once that uh, glue has set up, that building will be positively located. Now I can take it out and work on the rest of it, and it will go back perfectly every time. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this installment. Next week, we will add some of the many details which go into making this elevator a very interesting structure. So stay tuned, and I will see you again then. Thanks for watching.